This is the Sports Talk Podcast Series, Episode 4, Season 3. My name is Chase Moskowitz, Senior and President, along with my partner, Vice President, Junior, here in Hetzel, and uh, Junior, Daniel Almash. Uh, Noah Volan, Freshman. Sean Worth, Freshman. Alessio Moffitt, Freshman. Lucas Loria, Freshman. Alexander Shakir, Freshman. And finally, Mr. J. And we are back. And we are back. We're going to be talking about uh, NFL trade deadline and the MLB free agency because the World Series is over. So we, we got a couple good topics to talk about. Let's start off with the NFL. I want to go to my, my friend Alex Shafir and let's talk. Well, first off, the Devontae Adams trade has not been working. Second off, the um, DeAndre Hopkins just went to the Chiefs, and that's going to be great for Patty Mahomes because now um, – He's got basically a new Tyree kill, but Ty- DeAndre Hopkins is as good with hands. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't really agree with uh, your uh, Devontae Adams trade, but yeah. Yeah, the Jets just came off a big win versus the Texans. who are like 6-2 and two or something like that. And Devontae Adams is a big part of that, having like a touchdown and a lot of yards. Um, I really like... Um, like trying to move off topic here, I really think that one one person that could be on, like on the move is probably DK Metcalf because the Seahawks are in last place. Even though it's like a really close thing, I uh, I really don't know the way they're playing right now. But um, I really think that DK Metcalf could be a possibility if they really want to like. But they're probably going to ask for like a lot of like a couple picks. I like Kieran's uh, decision there to go with DK Metcalf. But I'm going to go with a little bit of homegrown talent from the Giants here. Is he so Jolari? He's been hot on the trade market, but as we know, Zadarius Smith just got traded to the Lions because, you know, Hutchinson's out with that broken, uh, what, Fibia, I believe. Yeah, Fibia. Yeah. And he, they only gave him a six and a seventh for him, so, but here's the thing, I feel like Aziz, I feel like Aziz is going to get maybe a fourth to fifth round pick, maybe both, um, so just look through that, through that for the next, what, couple hours, because the deadline's a five, so look through a Aziz Ojolari trade coming up soon. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I think for for the Giants, the Giants wise, it's it's tank season. It's been the tank season for like ten years, but I really hope that they don't win like three three or four more games, and we just trade away Aziz Elite uh, Aziz and um, Darius Slayton, because I would just like to tank and get some receivers and a quarterback that can throw the ball. Uh, I like that. Um, um, I like what you just said there, like. I mean, honestly, the Giants have not been good since Eli Manning and um, Tom Coughlin when we won those two Super Bowls, 2008, 2012. Um, but I think with us, we're just going to tank. And this week against in Germany against the Panthers, it's a battle for the number one overall pick. I really like hope we lose because there's been a trend. Any team who has lost to the Panthers this season, their head coach has been fired. So I'm really hoping that we lose so Brian Daywell gets fired. <laughs> Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. First of all, the only fired head coach that I'm going to be agreed with here is Dennis Allen from the Saints. He absolutely sucks. And for anyone who wants Brian Dayballs fired, I tell you this right now. Look in the mirror. That's all I have to say. Because Dayball, with a good quarterback, you've seen what he's done with Josh Allen. You've seen the similarities in the playbooks. Get him Cam Ward or Jalen Milrow, this offense. I tell you this now, with this top three defense in the league, this is a contending team next year with Jalen Milrow or Cam Ward. Thank you very much. Honestly, I agree with you, Dan. It's not Dayball's fault. He's doing everything he can. It's just, like, so hard with the team because, like, they're trying, like, way too hard to do, like, simple things, like – Especially, like, I mean, also it's been plagued with injuries. So, again, it's not it's not his fault. It's really just mainly, like, the team and the way they're performing. So it's just, that's it. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, moving on from NFL uh, trade deadline. Now let's go to MLB. Uh, the season just ended. Um, let's not talk about the World Series because we've done it before. But let's give it to Dan, our favorite Juan Soto lover. And let him talk about Juan Soto for a couple minutes. I'm yeah. I'm here to talk about just uh, not only the best player in this free agent class, but this free agency class as a whole. I mean, you have top tier stars and you have top tier pitchers and bats.
matters. But when everyone looks at, at who is the best in this class, it has to be Juan Jose Soto Pacheco. That man right there, born to be a Yankee, lived the Yankee dream. I, I expect my. I'll give you my offer here. My my most comfortable offer here for him would be thirteen years for six hundred and twenty five million dollars. I would go more because I know Steve Cohen's out there in his room, and he's just gonna offer him a bag. Chase, I'll give it back to you. Um. So I'm just looking like like at like a Yankees Plan B that that we could possibly get if we don't get Soto. If we don't get Soto, which is un. It, um, when we did Soto, but um, but if there is a plan B, I think that one person that we can probably go after is probably Christian Walker, especially if we don't get uh, if Rizzo doesn't resign, which is probably is not going to happen. And other else, we need a second baseman like Ha Sung Kim, like for the Padres. I mean, he's also he's pretty de- pretty good defense, better than Glaber, who's the worst defensive. Uh, second baseman in the league and as for pitchers um, Tanner Scott which honestly we could get even if we do get Soto and you know I think that's like a viable plan B if we don't get him um, for Soto I feel like uh, Soto is a great player and like he's one of the best right now um, if the Mets do get him if the Mets do get him Imagine this three. Imagine this three. Lindor, Soto, Nimmo. That is literally just a ridiculous first three lineup. <laughs> All right, here. Am I talking or are you talking? Whoa. Anyway. Listen, also, Peter Alonso on free agency. So if we lose him, we got to get someone else. Um, and here's a, another good player, which I would be interested in if I'm the Mets. Anthony Rizzo. I'll tell you why. Every time I wa- every time I see the Yankees play, all I see Rizzo hits the ball. Rizzo hits the ball. That is consistency. All right, let's move on. Um, I'm from a Mets fan. I'm a Mets fan, and uh, if it's between Juan Soto and Pete Alonso, it's really hard to choose. It's kind of like uh, no, no. It, it's, it's loyalty because. Pete Alonso is like the uh, is the Mets Aaron Judge. He's been with the team. Yeah, yeah. He's loyal. He's he's like a captain. But I mean Lindor's kind of there too. But I don't. Uh, yeah, but I'd say leadership. It's it's kind of close. But I don't know. I think I would go with Soto just because he's more talented. Do uh, you guys want to? I agree with that. Um, I think for the Yankees. Their, like besides their biggest factor needing to get Soto back if they want to contend for another championship is 100% like Almash at first base. I don't. We're, obviously, we're not signing Rizzo back. He's old. He was a great team leader, but I think our options. That's what I was saying. Either a bench coach or like just have him there. And I think our best pickup besides Alonzo. Because I think I feel like for certain he's just gonna want to stay with the Mets, like loyalty, is to get Christian Walker. Yes. I we need we need the defense and the hitting. Christian Walker has just been there the past couple of years, and that's who we really need besides outfield. Hey, Mr. Jay here. Yeah, no, my main concern is Pete Alonso. Uh, I don't even really need Soto to be honest with you. I don't think he's leaving the Yankees. Um, I just, I just want Pete to stay. Um, I just, he's like the heart of the team. And it's just, if they get, if they get rid of Pete and then they get Soto, it's just going to be a different feel. And I just, it's going to be weird. And I, I don't think they're going to be, be as good. So we'll see what the Mets do. But I know they're going to offer Soto a boatload of greenbacks. Definitely, lots of money, lots of money. I also, I also do agree with, uh, with, with you, Chase, on the, uh, on the whole like captain factor with Alonzo. Like coming from a Yankee fan, like I fit with uh, the whole deal with Judge. Is like the, the thing is with Judge is that the reason why he stayed is because he got the offer to be captain. So I think like maybe one of the incentives for Alonzo, like especially if they don't get Soto, because he'll probably, if you guys don't get Soto, which is gonna, is, is going to happen, um, they're going to pay Alonzo more money and probably offer him the spot as captain because he most likely is the only one on the team who deserves it right now. Yeah, so. let's, uh, let's get some couple closing thoughts. Um, what about, let's talk about some other free agents other than the big two, okay? Just a couple minutes. Um, I also saw a report. This is more on the pitching side. I like Corbin Burns as a free agent. Yes, I think he's going to return to the Orioles because I think the Orioles, with the new ownership, they're going to give him a lot more money. 
But I'm going to go Yankees-wise because the Yankees have a lot of money coming off the books. And I like – I hated Clay Holmes. My, my heart is shattered. I hate him. Um, the Yankees' bullpen this year was terrible. Yeah. Garbage. We need – I want Tanner Scott. I wanted him at the deadline, but seeing how much the Padres gave up for him just for a half a season, I looked at it and it was just terrible. I want my predi- my my prediction for Tanner Scott signing with the New York Yankees. I want him for three years, forty million dollars, and this is after Christian Walker signs for four years and one hundred and sixty million. Yeah, some great thoughts, Lucas. What do you What do you think? I agree with all much. Like I really like that was the number one free agent I wanted at the deadline. I wanted Tanner Scott because I had seen enough of Clay Holmes. Like, in the midseason, like, he was just outrageous. Started good in the postseason, but that is our main concern. But um, I think, yeah, Tanner Scott, possibly Corbin Burns, and, uh, yeah. I think Clay Holmes is very underrated because he's inconsistent but, inconsistent, but when he's pitching good, he's very good. All right, let's 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 get some rap closing thoughts, and then uh, we'll move on to next week. Yeah, um, well, one last thing about Lucas said, yeah. Uh, Clay Holmes was so bad this year is that even when he wasn't closing games, he was still getting blown saves for stuff that he, that he didn't even do. So I definitely think we need a, like, Luke Weaver is great, but I think we need, like, another setup man for him because Tommy Canely, even though he was – it was really good the postseason. He was the one that lost us the game, the, lost us the World Series inevitably. So, all right, one more thought from Dan. Okay. I'm on a time limit. Uh, Brian Cashman masterclass, as he does best, he's going to go dumpster diving in the trade market. Get me Camilio Duvall, even though he had a 4.89 ERA. I don't care. Matt Blake will fix him. He's an all-star closer, 102-mile-an-hour cutter. Get me the next Emmanuel Clause. That's a great closing thought there, Dan. Thank you guys so much for, wa- for listening, and we will see you next week.